What's going on guys? Today we are revisiting triboelectrostatic separation of trichome heads from dry sift. Let's dive in, shall we? So as you can see here, we already have the collected uh, hash and this was done uh, by collecting it from a vibrating screener but you could just as easily collect this yourself simply by um, agitating your trim or flower or whatever and sifting it through one of these uh, screens. Now, what size screens do you need? That really depends. And the more the merrier, but there is no wrong size. There is no right size. So there is always a particle distribution with trichome heads. So. Each uh, screen will capture a size and so on and so forth. I get asked, what screens do I need? What brushes do I need? Uh, what gloves do I need? We're gonna try to put a link in this video with a kit where you can just buy everything if we're able to find a good screen supplier. So stay tuned. But the point here is that pretty much any screen will work. Pretty much any brush will work. If I recommend a certain type of brush for you, you will probably find that you can't find it locally. So it doesn't really matter. I think the takeaway that we want to take from all of this is the patterns, the sequence of what's happening. It is not complicated. It is really easy to make it work, but it's very difficult to perfect it. So unless somebody teaches you how to do it, it is not straightforward to understand it because there's a certain feeling that you are looking for in the glove, but this is gonna be a great starting point and it's not something that's rocket science to figure out. So I'm sure all of you guys will be able to figure this out just by looking at this video. And again, it's just trial and error. Just keep trying until you perfect your craft. There's just a few pointers. Uh, your gloves need to be uh, tight. In this video, you can see that the gloves are very loose, so that doesn't help, but it's a multi-stage process and you refine and you refine and you refine until you get to the quality that you're looking for based on your preferences. So as you can see, once you have your hash extracted, the next process is to decapitate. And that is the primary purpose of what he is doing right now is to decapitate, to remove the head from the stock. Once that's done, the electro charge is inevitable. And as you can see, he is already collecting heads with the electrostatic charge that builds up on his glove. So heads have a different static charge from stocks and biomass. And so the decapitation process is to cut off the stock from the head so you can separate them. We can go into detail why we don't want stocks in our hash, but the point being is that we're trying to remove them. And in order to be successful with that is by having a certain amount of pressure on that screen rubbing in a circular motion, as you can see in this video. And what that does is the stalks go into the holes, into the mesh. And as you're turning and you're rotating, they will break off that head. So we want to grind those stalks to make them smaller and smaller and smaller, push them through the mesh so we can get rid of them. Now, the large heads at each individual stage, they won't make it through the sieve. So We're, we collect them and you just use a small brush to brush them off your hand. It's really inevitable uh, to collect these uh, heads from the gloves. They are so strongly charged that it's really easy to collect. But the point being is that you collect your heads, you rub, you break up these stalks and you grind them down and you push them through the mesh. At some point, you'll notice that the mesh becomes a little dirty and particles accumulate underneath it. So we just gently tap that mesh to remove 
the particles that are clinging to the bottom of the mesh. But you continue the process until you note that nothing else is either making it through the mesh and especially that nothing is accumulating on your glove, right? So you eventually pick up all of the heads that you can pick up and decide, okay, let's stop. Let's move on to the next particle size. And you can separate your heads by size because that's what you're doing right now, right? You're sorting. So that's why I said it really doesn't matter what size uh, sieves you're using because there, there are all kinds of particle sizes in your hash. And there's mature heads, there's immature heads, and they all range by size. And so pretty much anything will work. There are preferences, of course, but continue to rub, continue to grind down those stalks, continue to collect those heads in, in just a series of steps. Aside from a glove, you can also use a paint roller. You can use a CD. You can line your paint roller with a glove. You can line your paint roller with a parchment paper. Um, don't be too concerned about the quality of the hash that you're collecting because this is a multi-step process. You can come back and work this hash again and again and again. And in each step, you will remove more and more contaminants and refine and refine and refine. Some of the few tips that I can give you here is that this is temperature dependent. So you do want to be in a cool or cold room instead of a hot room. And also it is humidity dependent. This will not work. The static charge will not build up if there's a lot of humidity in uh, your room. So either get a dehumidifier or work in an environment that is not humid. Right, so pretty much we picked up all of the heads that we could from this product. And so you can set that mesh size apart and know that there is a lot of hash in the next level, right? And now we just proceed. Again, you're gonna have a lot of stocks that are not crushed. You're gonna have a different subset of heads, a different fraction, a different size so you just continue the process of agitating, triboelectrically charging your glove to pick up those heads, collecting these heads for further processing, or, or that may be the quality that you want, but that's really it. That's the sequence of events that are happening. And this will happen through each layer. And each layer is gonna have a different size hash but that's really it. There's not much more that I can describe here to convey the, the, the process. And some of the guys that I've done this with, they all have theories, they all have just methods of how they do it, but it's extremely easy to get that charge. And the point being is that the heads charge in a certain charge that is very different from the stocks and the biomass. So. Whatever brushes you use, how you use the brushes, what pattern you agitate on, that's just personal preference. And there are lots of tricks. You can watch some of our other videos on the different tricks that some of these guys use to remove those contaminants. Uh, the deployment of brushes, how the brushes can actually help you pick up contaminants because of course the brushes carry an electrical charge as well. But again, those are just nuances and tips and tricks that people develop with skill. Those things are best taught, but you can learn them by yourself as well. And as you can see here, we're using parchment paper. And the reason parchment paper works so well is because parchment paper is an insulator. 
And so you are insulating your personal charge from everything else. So you can use parchment paper, you can use a paint roller, you cover the paint roller in a glove, then you line that with parchment paper. And those are just tricks that help you pick up larger volumes of hash. We do have other videos describing this. And again, you will also see how we're tapping the bottom of the screen to decontaminate the screen because it does build a static charge. Also take a look at the size of the screen that he's working on. It's pretty big and you can understand why he's using such a big screen because you do have to do a lot of motion and you may be flinging some hash uh, quite a long distance. And when you're doing this in a smaller screen, it may not be so practical. I just wanted to thank everybody for watching. We've grown this channel a lot and I've been getting a lot of comments from people that are really appreciative of the work that we do. I really thank you guys. If you have ideas for topics that we should be addressing, if we're doing something wrong, please uh, let us know. If you would like us to shoot some videos with you guys one day or have a discussion, we are open to all kinds of suggestions. And we are a small business. We appreciate all of the customers, all the people that buy products from us. We know you have lots of options to purchase from other companies, but we really do appreciate you choosing us as your trusted advisor and you trust the quality of the products that we make. And that really does drive the research that we are doing and moving the industry forward. Just to wrap up the video, this is the final fraction that he's going to collect. This is mostly ground up stock. This is mostly heads. So it has a very strong electrical charge. And as you can see in this video, he's having trouble unclumping it all because it is such a strong electrical charge that all the particles uh, come together. But at the end, you clean this up, remove whatever hash, whatever trichomes you can. And then what's left over is pretty much just crushed up stocks. There's little to no heads. And that pretty much wraps up this video. We filmed this video the same day we were collecting data for a US patent on an electrostatic separator. So if anyone's interested in learning more about an automated solventless electrostatic separating solution, please head over to our website and reach out there. We're working on launching a commercial machine sometime in 2023.